So the next problem we need to do is we have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember, we need to determine if it's a max or a min, right? So to determine the max or the min, we go back to our rule that was in our notes. If a is less than 0, then we have a max value. And if a is greater than 0, then we have a min value. So we look at our a, and in this problem, see, we have, my quad, we have our quadratic function. And in this problem, our a is equal to what? So a is equal to negative 2. So therefore, a is less than 0. So we're going to have a maximum value. So that means my graph is going to open down, right? Now, I don't know what that value is, so let's go and find it out. So remember, my graph's going to look something like this. I have no idea what it looks like right now, but I know it's going to have a maximum value. So that maximum value, which at the peak, the apex right, of our parabola, that top thing is what we call our vertex. Now remember, the vertex has a couple qualities. First of all, the vertex is your maximum value for a function when it opens down. And your vertex also goes through your axis of symmetry. right? And remember, we talked about how to find the axis of symmetry. It's a vertical line. And so the axis of symmetry, the first point is you need to write opposite of b over 2a. So for to find the x value of my vertex, or my maximum value, is opposite of b over 2a. So I look at my b, and I'm going to have negative 4 divided by 2 times negative 2. So I get negative 4 divided by negative 4, which equals 1. Right? So therefore, of my vertex, I have the coordinate 1. However, I need to figure out what the what the output value is, right? Because the output value is going to tell me what my maximum value is. This at 1, right, that means x equals 1. That does not tell you the maximum value. That just tells you what the x value is. We need to figure out what the output value is, right? And since we're talking about a function, we're going to look for the f of x value. So how, if I know what x is, how do I find out the value of f of x? You plug it in. So you do f of 1 equals negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 3. So that equals negative 2 plus 4 minus 3, which equals negative 1. Huh? I didn't square it. I, this graph is, that's just a made up graph. I didn't. Did I? Did I OK. So you have 1 squared, negative 2. That's going to be plus 4. Minus 3, wrote down, right? Yep, OK. So that equals negative 1. So actually, our graph doesn't look like this. It actually looks like, right? So that's actually what our graph is going to look like. OK, Alex? Got that? So our vertex is at 1, comma, negative 1. So the, minim so the max value, so we said this graph has a max value. The max value is at negative 1, because that's going to be your output. So now the next thing I need to do is determine my domain and range. So last class period, we talked about domain and range. Domain is pretty simple because my graph is always going to keep on expanding, right? Even as it goes down infinity, it's not going to go up anymore. The maximum value is at negative 1. But as it keeps on going down, it's just going to keep on expanding. So therefore, it's going to encompass all of my x values. So therefore, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, meaning all x values on the x-axis are going to have a coordinate point on this function, all of them. However, do all y coordinates have a coordinate point on the function? No, right? Only the coordinate points from negative infinity, but all the way up to where? What's the largest y value that has a coordinate point on that function? To negative 1. We're going to go to smallest to the largest value. No, nope, because think about negative 5,000. Is that smaller than negative 1, right? OK. That may make sense. Questions? Preguntas? Cool? Yes? Well, it depends. I mean, if it was a mat, like what, it, what? Remember the last problem? Didn't we do like a minimum? So the last problem, let's say it was 1, 2, 3. So this one, the range for this one would be from 3 to infinity, right? Because you're not going, the lowest value is 3. Here, the lowest value is negative infinity. But for here, the lowest value is 3. 
and then you go to your largest. Yes? Sure. Was that the same one you asked? No, you asked for number five. 